to me, return on the dollar is very important because if we invest a dollar into our crop, that's a dollar that's tied up in the crop that I can't use elsewhere. So in a business, like if we look at our farm as a business that it is, return on the dollar is very important. So if we look at oats compared to corn this year, the inputs on oats paying $275 rent, just put that number in there, um, you know, re your results may vary, <laughs> but we'll plug that number in. It's just, just shy of $500 to put in an acre of oats this year. So it seems like a lot, but a lot of that's rent, of course. So if we compare that to corn over here, it, it would be hard to get it under $1,000 per acre of inputs. And we can return just about the same. So if we did 100 bushel oats at $7, seven dollar oats or six dollar you pick your number you got six to seven hundred dollars of revenue you can do the math easily enough on profitability not even including the straw and over here on the corn side you know if we return thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars per acre would be on the high end but if we're using 13 see how close we are to the same dollar amount if we can't get that input under a thousand dollars over here on the corn side you're better off investing significantly less for the same return per acre on the on the small grain side. Within reason, you can trim back the amount of applied nitrogen on corn. So you can r rely on some amount of credit from the clover. Now, as ongoing work on the farm, it's like, well, how much can we continually rely on? And of course, we want to push that as much as we can. Um, as far as we can uh, because that's where our efficiency comes from um, you know I think that that 10 years from now we'll be able to be in a different position even you know because I look back 10 years it's prior to 2013 obviously so if I look to the next 10 years where it might be I would have never placed myself here so what can I be trimming and doing as far as efficiency 10 years from now? So I kind of keep that long view out there and study what we know now to refine that number of how much we cut. So it's not like you can go, okay, we're gonna introduce this. We're gonna trim our fertilizer bill in half on the corn side. No, we're gonna start to refine it on the corn side so we can keep our profitability and our yields up on the corn side too. But profitability of course is yield or revenue minus expenses. So there's a sweet spot there. It doesn't always mean yield. Well, one thing I've noticed on my farm and maybe could apply to the broader scale of the community, other farmers, would be, you know, when you start at small scale, you know, you can start to get a picture of what the economic return of the, of the small grain is gonna be, not just that given year. You know, when we look at the dollars per acre of 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 profit but then as a system of your farm too so there could be increased yields on the corn and soybean side because you have a crop in between them and soybeans you know will have less diseases they'll yield better so as a whole and a whole system you know i would argue that you're going to increase your profitability on small and mid-sized farms that you know, are willing to um, look at their farms differently, farm differently than this corn and soybean rotation back and forth. And so then we get this economic picture of our own farms and the increased profitability. But then what do I do individually? So I go and I need, you know, I, I could afford a, a new grain drill, which I never thought I would be buying a brand new no-till grain drill uh, 10 years ago um, I'd have told you you're crazy and then it's other equipment too it's um, belt conveyors and grain cleaning equipment and a new seed tender and all these things that I could purchase now for this oat crop that before you know I, I, I wouldn't have been at the, that implement dealer to do that so the implement dealers are gonna see a benefit the rural communities are going to see a benefit because if we can keep more farmers on the land, uh, small and mid-sized farmers, they have families who go to the local school districts, 
who shop at the local stores, um, not just the implement dealers, but the, the uh, grocery stores and the craft stores and the general stores. And that's what's gonna keep our rural communities uh, healthy are people staying in the, in the community, making money in the community and spending their money there. And, and I don't think that any, you know, farmer that I, you know, c communicate with here, friends with, collaborate with, you know, we don't want to see further um, consolidation of growers. And this may be a way that we can, you know, start to limit the consolidation. Because if we don't do anything about consolidation, or, you know, we're just going to continue to see the death of rural America, and there won't be farmsteads, and there won't be be rural schools or small town schools anymore because everybody's going to vacate the rural areas because there won't be anything there for them. And that, that, that isn't what, what I, my values were raising, you know, getting raised on a farm. It was something that you were proud of, you know, that that was how you were, how you, how you grew up. So, yeah, I think it's, it, it could be if, if again, you know, if we, if we, maybe make some changes in the farm bill and companies, private companies want to invest in this type of agriculture, that it does provide an opportunity to stay this sustainable and sustainability means economic sustainability too uh, for small farmers. <laughs>